<laughs> now, I, I want to emphasize again, we haven't proved anything, but boy, we've, we've accumulated a lot of evidence. <laughs> um, uh, here's an, so, so let's assume that these formulas are right. That the, the twist and the rotate, twist adding one, rotate negative one over x are, are, are the correct things. Um, I, I'd like to sort of have a proof, a, con, a convincing argument that no matter what kind of a horrible fraction I have here, that I can find a sequence of twists and rotates that'll get it back to zero. Right? That would be sort of cool that you could start with any fraction in the world. And eventually grind your way, you know, might, you know, if I started with, might take a million operations, but can, can we get down? And, uh, so let's just sort of ignoring the, the twists and rotates, just look at these numbers here. And, uh, in fact, let's ignore the very first one here. Tell me if you see any nice patterns of the, uh, among the numbers we've, we've got here. The denominators are getting smaller and smaller. Is that a good thing? Because why? Yeah, once you get the denominator to one, we've got a whole number. And, and then we sort of know, you know, I mean, if it's positive, we know how to get to zero. If it's negative, it's really easy to get to, you know, negative seven. Oh, that's great. Seven twists and I'm done, right? So that's a good thing. If, if, and it certainly seems to be the case that the denominators are going down as as we crank through this, op, you know, doing the operation that we did here, right? Can anybody see why they have to go down? Right. You see, so we start at some number and we do enough. Well, where's a where's a uh, good one? I guess this one, right? We did twist, twist, twist. We, we started, well, let's say, when we got to negative 19 eighths. We're going to keep doing what? Adding 8 over 8, 8 over 8, 8 over 8, until we finally push the numerator to positive. Did you see that? So, uh, we're going to, and, and so what, what happens when we get positive? Is this number, how big is this number? It has to be less than 1. You see that? Because adding one, I mean, we start at some weird negative fraction. Each, it, well, let's just uh, draw the, a number line here. So, so here's your standard, here's uh, zero, one, negative one, negative two, negative three. We start at some oddball place here, right? What does the twist operation do? It advances us exactly one unit. So I'll be in exactly the same position between these these two numbers, as I was, you know, if I start, I'm, I'm saying I start with, let's say, the fraction happened to be between negative 3 and negative 2, but not a whole number. Then when I add 1, I'm going to be in the same relative position between the next two numbers. So adding 1 again will put me in the same relative position. Same relative position. So what's going to happen? I'm going to, I can't ever advance beyond 1 because I take steps of exactly one, and I'm in between two, so I have to be between zero and one. And what does that mean in fractions? The numerator is smaller than the, the, numerator is smaller than the denominator. So what did we do? We started with, in this case, <clears throat> negative 19 eighths, and I took enough steps until finally we went positive. So the 19 eighths was sitting here. Finally, we get here to a number that's between zero and one, meaning the numerator, five, is less than eight. And what happens when that happens, when we get positive? We flip it over. That means what? This number is smaller than this one. The denominator had to go down. So here we are at five eighths that went to negative eight fifths. And now we're working with fifths. And so we just keep stepping up by five fifths, by five fifths, by five fifths until suddenly, or finally, we are at some number less than one, two fifths, flip it over. We're going to have a two in the denominator. So do you sort of see how this argument would show that even if we'd started with 17,452,318 over, you know, 971, we would eventually have to grind our, our way down? Sort of an interesting... And then you started with a negative fraction, you would just do T a whole bunch of times until, until you got to a positive, positive fraction. Right. And then... so, so the algorithm, I think, is the, the algorithm to get to zero is pretty straightforward. You just say, look at the number. If it's positive... 
we don't want to add one because that makes it pulls us away from our target. So you, you you do the negative one over it, and that'll flip it back over. So so what happens is you march forward, twist, 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 and finally we wind up between zero and one. As soon as that happens, flip the thing over, and it tosses it somewhere into the negatives. If it happens to hit on a whole number in the negatives, then you know that you're going to grind it to zero. If it doesn't happen to hit a, a, an exact whole number, you're going to march up until you're beyond one, but with smaller denominator each time. And so when the denominators keep going down, you, you can't keep going down forever. <laughs> so eventually you'll hit one, and that's the denominator you like, because that means you'll zero the thing out. 